Hello everybody, it's the Alco Diesel Guy with another project for you. In this case, of course, it's related to the Bachman documentary. Of course, I had to restore some of these engines, and this is the first one I took on. It's a Bachman F7 unit, and that was the original price apparently paid by the previous person that owned this thing. This locomotive is notable since it appears to be an early pancake drive locomotive. All the units built in Hong Kong tended to be all-wheel drive. Anyway, let's see how she runs. Okay, let's put some power to it and see what this does, if it does anything. And we got a light. And absolutely nothing else. Okay, so the motor is clearly seized on this. Uh, actually, yeah, it was a lot more than just seized. Again, this is the made in Hong Kong one. Hmm. See another thing I gotta fix up here. This is out of place. I gotta get myself some horns for these engines when I get a chance. Okay, let's see. Let's take a look and then see what's a cooking. Okay, after doing some internet research, I found that this is actually what I need to get into right here. There is a clip that I need to remove. Trusty Phillips head screwdriver. This should let me drop the truck and get access to the motor and see exactly what's going on in here. Mind you, I'm not removing the brushes, I'm just removing the motor um, screw thing itself. Now, for some reason, I don't like this after I messed with it a little bit, the light went out. I'm hoping the headlight didn't go kaput, but it could have. There it is, now that clip is gone. Well, I see the clip is on the other side. I see I just have to press this down, and it should just drop out. There it is. And here's where I got that first clue to the shocking reason why this locomotive wasn't running. Ooh, I just saw something I don't like. Is that a burn mark on that? Another thing I didn't really notice at the time, but I will point out now, is that there is no resin on the screws themselves that hold the brush plates in place. This indicates that someone's been here before me. As this is how Bachman identified locomotives that were tampered with and would therefore not qualify for the warranty. <laughs> Going to now carefully remove these. This is where the brushes hide underneath these two little metal paddle whatchamahooses thingies. Going to put that screw in there. So I have to do now is gently swing this back. This is also the connection point. Oh wow, this thing is. I don't know what they did to this poor wire. Ugh, look at this corrosion. Ugh, no wonder this poor thing isn't running anymore. I'd say this is. Well, I didn't have to worry about the spring popping loose because it is so badly stuck on here and it won't move. So I'm just going to gently push this back and see what happens. Ooh, I didn't like that. Okay, let me try to get the other one out now. Again, I'm going to use a little bit more caution this time, although I wasn't exactly not careful before. Get a little bit more light on here for you folks. No, I do have the light on. Okay. Thought for sure I had it off there for a second. Again, undo the screw. Pop that in there, and then gently move this aside. What I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my finger in place here. And uh, the problem with this is it's so badly stuck on there. As you see, it should come up, and it's not. And there is, it's going up, so I have to gently take the tension off. Kind of like releasing a spring on a car, if you're familiar with working on cars. This is under tension, so once you release it, it wants to go flying. But if you release it nice and gently like that, you can get it out. And it won't go flying on you. Okay, so now we got that part taken care of. I'm now going to knock the brushes off and into my little plastic can thing over here where I'm keeping all my parts. If I can get them out, they're stuck in there good. It looks like the brushes are actually seized in there pretty good. Uh, hello, Mr. Brain Dead Train Geek. You might want to notice the condition of the motor. Just pointing this out. <laughs> I need those parts. If I don't have them, that's it. I'm screwed. Now we look at the top here, <laughs> I think I see what the problem is with this motor without going much further. This is an unfortunate side effect and defect with, these motor, with this motor design. Unfortunately, something either gets stuck in the gears and it stops the motor from spinning, which causes it to overheat, or some lubricant comes into contact with the commutator, thus causing it to short or overheat and melt, and melt the shell, as we see. Ah, there we go, finally. Ugh. Okay, so, that's the internals. Note the lack of wheel wipers in place. A good indication that this unit was scavenged for parts. OK. 
shape. So this is pretty much academic at this point, but I'll keep going forward with it. <clears throat> so now we've disassembled the whole section here. I'm going to get these two gear shafts out. Note to self, this is how they look. I'd also like to point something else out, in addition to the charred plastic remains on my hand at this point, clearly from the motor itself, is that this early Mark I style motor, as this is an early production pancake motor from Hong Kong, actually uses the black plastic gears, not the infamous white plastic ones that are known for cracking that these engines usually came with. Visual note to self. Ooh! Went flying on me. There it is. That I caught. Sort of. Okay, so this motor here is pretty much seized. Let's see if I can get inside here now. There's a, I remember how to get in there now. Ah, that's right. There are two more screws now that I have to take out right over here. These have never been off. So someone clearly tried to fix this at one point. You can tell because that red jelly stuff isn't there. But if you look very closely at what I'm doing right here, the um, red jelly is right on these two little screws right here, as we see. So very clearly, this part has never been out. Something I failed to note while I filmed this that also points out this particular motor was tampered with is the fact that it lacks the rear pickups. Someone clearly scavenged them. Again, these locomotives, even on the pancake days, always had pickups, which were in this case wipers, on both the motor truck and the actual collector truck. I think someone just took one look at that and said, to hell with this thing. And unfortunately, my time since I bought this thing has expired, so there's no way I'm going to get my money back on this. So I might as well take it apart and see exactly what's wrong with it. Maybe I can get on the internet and find a pancake motor I can just swap in here instead. But it's pretty clear I'm going to have to put a pancake in this. This is no way this is going to this is no way this is going to work. Work if it's been that badly burnt, but you never know. So let me try just for the heck of it. Couldn't hurt anything. I hope not, at least. <laughs> and that jelly was never off on these screws, so it never got taken this bar apart. Lubricant is all dried out. Now I should be able to just pull this apart. Actually, take it this way. You always take it by the thinner part of the cover. <clears throat> when I remember, and we can now get a look at the internals of this Bachmann engine. There it is, finally. Oh, So I finally got that off. This side doesn't seem too bad. The corrosion and the burning all seem to take place on the other side. Okay. This gear just came out of there. Here's where the burning came on, so I'd be interested to see what's up here. <clears throat> Let's go further apart here. This gear just came out, so I'm going to go pull this next one out. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. This is pretty much done. We take a look right over here. We can see where this thing actually burnt. The corrosion's all on this section here. This actually burned into it. This is where it burned, and oh yeah, look at that mess. Oh, it's like got peanut butter on it. That's actually grease that apparently got on this. It looks like it looks like it all came into this area and just ate it up and just destroyed it. Oh, and here's part of the commutator has been sheared off. Look at this right here. That should be connected. I think it is. No, actually, no, it's still in place. No, wait a minute. No, it's not. See this little piece here? You can see there was a piece of metal that should have been there, and it's not there anymore. It looks like this melted, actually. So the commutator on this motor is literally melted to a certain extent. There's corrosion on it. Yeah, you can see where it burnt. Where, where it burned. I don't know why I can't speak tonight. Yeah. So, yeah, this is in pretty terrible shape. And, yep. Yeah. You can also see the corrosion that piled up on the one side here from all what had happened inside. This thing really has been trashed utterly and thoroughly. Look at this right here. Yeah, this is what's left of the grease which somehow got piled onto this side. This looks like what saved it from burning up. It's just really a mess in there. You see here where the windings are supposed to be? These are shiny. You can see where this got hot. You can see where it, where it kind of burned a little bit. Right there, it literally started to melt through it right over here. Now if we take a look at the shell here, I'm going to go through all my gears in here. 
the shell, for example, now we take a look right over here. Yeah, you see all this plastic should be flat on the top and it's all kind of burned out. It melted here, it clearly got way too hot and it burned right through it. Here's another piece, oh here are the two brushes, these are what the brushes look like. Let me go put those in storage. Yeah, so it's, a, it's understandable what happened here. Someone tried to fix this and it literally melted the top here through. This motor got that hot and it actually burned through the commutator a bit. I guess this might work, but it's going to be a bit of a mess if I ever do get it running. Hmm, I'm going to have to think long and hard about trying to fix this thing at this point. Now, what happened to the washer I had here a second ago? Oh, here it is. I don't want to lose this little washer thing, so that's going to go in my little parts bin. <sighs> so yeah, one of the magnets here, as we can see, is completely corroded. Yeah, this is pretty well toast. This is pretty much toast. Yeah, this thing clearly had a hard life, and it's bit the dust. So, I could try to fix this thing, but I don't think it'll ever run quite the way it's supposed to. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Oh, the hair is on this thing. So I think what I want to do with this one, if I'm ever going to get this back on the rails, I'm going to have to buy myself a new motor for it because this thing is just gone. I mean, I think this, I guess you could probably salvage it. Oh, look at this here. Here's the grazing I was telling you about. You see how this is burned in here? These, are, these cuts are supposed to be on the top, but you can see the burn lines that came along the commutator right along here. It literally burned, and it did because... The reason why this burned is because it was runs really hot. I have a feeling a short hap what happened probably is this is that it was run really hard. It had a short in it and <clears throat> that occurred or someone reassembled this thing, messed around with the electronics on it and didn't know what they were doing and just trashed it. Now I was just about ready to throw the talent on this project because you can buy a locomotive cheaper than the actual motor to replace it, but then I remembered something. Being an old school model railroader, I had an old school model that was sitting around from when I was a kid that had failed on me a while back and decided to see if I could salvage some parts off of this. Mind you, I wasn't that proficient at repairing locomotives when I was a kid. Note how different this chassis is from the one we were just looking at. Talk about seek, seek and ye shall find. I thought I was going to be in big trouble trying to find a part for this, but, well, I went through my collection. Look at what I found here. This old rusty hulk that you're staring at right now was actually one of my engines back in the day when I was a kid. This got acquired for me, well, I want to say in 1995, I think it was, that long ago. It was one of the last pancake motor engines I ever got, if I'm not mistaken. I think this was in 95 when I got this. Or maybe before. Anyway... Or did I get this before? Hmm. It may have been before. It may have been more like 1994, 94, 93. Anyway, this is a Union Pacific F9 locomotive that I had for years. And it was pretty useful until this rear coupler broke off on it. And I never used it much after that. And then I wound up stripping it to get the wheels off at one point when I was a kid. Because, well, it was kind of useless if it couldn't pull things on the back. And I had, didn't have the stuff to repair. And I couldn't find the old coupler box or get it to stick on. I didn't have access to crazy glue in those days, believe it or not. And that was a huge issue. I was young, so my parents didn't want me near it. And my father was supposed to fix it, and he never got around to it for some reason. And I think also, at, by that point, newer engines from Atherin came out, and that was the end of that. There was just no need for this. But anyway, now I think I figured out how to deal with this engine. I can get this piece off. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do what I did on the other one to get it off. I'm going to the basement here. Um, completely not shielded from the elements. This is the earlier type, this is the later type motor, which actually doesn't, which actually has the nylon gear. Anywho, what I did from this point on to avoid going too much into detail here was to remove carefully both brushes and as well as the brush holders and the screws for the brush holders and then gently remove the power truck itself so I could swap it out with the other chassis I was working on. There it is, got it. Clipped. That little click you heard is, in fact, good news. Means that this will now drop out. Oh my god, look at all this crappy stuff in the way here. Okay, so now I got the motor free. I'll throw these two screws in there just to be on the safe side. I don't like you using rusty stuff, but you never know, I might need them. Next, I went ahead and actually disconnected these wires from the actual clips. Initially, I, I ripped one of them off because the solder was so weak on it, and the other one I clipped off using a pair of wire clippers. 
Again, these wires provide the rear pickup for the locomotive, and they will have to be connected to the other locomotives, locomotives connecting points, just like they were here, in order to get that power to the motor itself, as that's the only input the motor has for power pickup. Next, after testing the motor, which unfortunately I don't have the footage, as my camera apparently well died at this point, was was to basically pop the side frame truck things off to get access to the motor itself, so I could disassemble the locomotive motor and get a good look at it. And while this donor unit may be a bit of a rust bucket, as we can clearly tell by the commutator and the armature winds, it's clearly in much better shape. The next step now, of course, is to give this engine a good clean-up. Obviously, this is a good time to lube and clean it. And I'm going to be using for this task some conductive lubricant. In this case, it's the Easy Lube Bachmann-branded thing. Kind of appropriate, but of course, it wasn't available at the time this locomotive was manufactured. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and use some of that stuff and go ahead and clean up the commutator. Pretty easy to use. Nothing too hardcore about this. Just put a little bit on your micro brush or your Q-tip, whichever you have it. Have it access to. I prefer using a micro brush because they don't have the fuzz that you get on a Q-tip that can get all over this and create potential problems. Anyway, just take a micro brush and run it back and forth a couple times and as you see as I'm doing this, it's actually literally taking that nasty coating of black off this. That's how you know it's working. That should do it. Now that, at least in my humble opinion, looks a million times better than what I started with. And just to remind everyone why this whole repair was necessary, if we take a look at the, the old unit on the left that I'm replacing, we can see just how badly trashed it is, and if we take a look at the new unit on the right there, we can see what an improvement that one is. So this definitely needed to happen, and it will definitely serve this locomotive well. Anyway, I'm going to apply just a little bit more conductive lube right there on the bearing. The reason why I'm using this instead of the oil is because I've heard that this has a huge issue with burning up the commutator, and as we saw and with the armatures as well, as we saw with the previous motor, this appears to have happened, so why would I take a chance with that? Anyway, next, once that's all done, I carefully slip it back into position and start to reassemble the gear case, which is a bit of a pain. Again, that white gear has the, both the top and the bottom part to it. The bottom part talks to the lower gears, which in turn drive the wheels, and the upper part connects to the commutator gear itself, which in turn spins the rest of the gear shaft, so it's very critical you get that in position. Please note, I'm also not going to be putting any grease on these gears, as there is some on there that looks like this was graphite grease for very obvious reasons. Graphite, again, is a little bit different in that it sticks to the gears itself, and you can see how it looks right there. It is not actually a liquid grease, it's a solid grease. The advantage is it doesn't flow and it doesn't cause any issues with the gears themselves. Anyway, once all of this has been carefully reassembled, I'm carefully going to put the top back on it, flip it over again, and install the screws. But before I do that, I'm going to give all those little slots where the wheels sit a little lick of oil right there. Again, this is below the commutator, so it shouldn't be a problem. I'm only going to use a light little uh, sort of drop in each one of those little holes where the gear shafts go and the uh, axles themselves slip in. In the end, for my own psychological well-being, I decided to just put a little oil on the gears themselves. Again, it isn't known to stick, but just for my own well-being. Again, just a tiny little dab here is all I did between the gears themselves so they wouldn't rub too, too much is what I was concerned about. Again, you don't want to use much, just a little itty-bitty bit. Next, I then carefully gave the case itself, case cover itself, a little lube right where the bearing is, where the actual commutator pokes through and spins, as well as the top of the commutator again, again using conductive lube. And yes, I did make sure that any excessive carbon was removed from that brush first, it just was so filthy in there that it just kept turning colors, just to show you how, even if these motors don't have much mileage on it, they can wear. And finally, with everything nice and carefully lubed, I'm going to take the motor case cover thing and place it right on top, making sure it sits correctly in position and then reinstall the screws and get everything back together again. Again, for luck, since some of the oil ran off, and I noticed I didn't get every last point here, one little drop of blob of oil on these little wheel holder thingies where the, ax where the metal axles actually sit, because again, metal against plastic, metal usually wins, and yeah, this is all it's going to have between it and the axle plastic itself, oh, so we don't want that to wear out. 
And next, I've already replaced one of the gear splines. I'm going to go put that last one in place. It goes in the same way. Again, make sure the gears line up. Again, these two splines help transfer the power to the actual wheel, sh wheel sets themselves. And last, but certainly not least, I'm going to put the wheel sets back in place. Again, these have to snap into position. Be sure to line the gears up correctly before you do this. Apply gentle pressure until they lock into place. There we go. It's also a good time at this point, unlike what I failed to do, to make sure that all those wheel wipers are sitting behind the wheels themselves, as they will be need to be there in order to pick up power for the real wheel set. Next, I'll reinstall the very critically needed lower screws, which hold the actual motor together. I'll then place the actual lower combined side frame assembly thingy onto the bottom to secure the wheels in place. Next, I place the brushes back into position as well as the springs to ensure that the assembly will go together in the frame correctly as there is no other way of doing this as per the constraint nature and the compact nature, I should say, of the actual chassis this will be sitting in. Next, in an effort to keep them in position, I put the brush spring covers on top of the springs and loosely in position in order to facilitate assembling the locomotive. Again, this is a pretty tricky step coming up, so... Yeah, it's a good idea to do this so the springs don't go flying as you place them under tension. And now we've reached the fun part. You have to carefully thread the wires through the chassis, which is sort of the easier part of this particular procedure. And next, those particular two loose wires now have to be hooked up to those two terminal connections right there that go on top of where the motor brushes are currently secured. This requires soldering, and unfortunately I don't have footage of this because it was just too delicate of a procedure considering all I was holding on to at the same time, and to be honest, it was getting late and I needed to get this project done and off my workbench before I lost Not to mention my night's sleep. Again, they use the same screws, so yes, again, you have to release the springs sort of gently to put these in position. This is probably the most difficult part of this, part of this whole procedure. I didn't get all the filming done here, but I will pass on exactly what I did. I proceeded to place my thumb on the brush spring cover I was releasing and then gently undid the screw. Once the screw is out, I then carefully placed the terminal in position and then put the screw back through it to hold it in place. Again, this is very delicate, not to mention frustrating, so I did not film this section as I needed both hands available and I needed absolute concentration to pull it off. Okay, before I go any further, now I guess it would be a good idea to just to make sure that this works correctly. I got the motor in, but I don't have the other two connecting wires hooked into anything. Just plug my transformer in. Let's turn the juice on and see what she does. Ground control to train geek. Ground control to train geek. You have a disconnected wire. I repeat, you have a disconnected wire. Over. It's clearly is hooked in, I think. That's hooked in. Oh, eh. <laughs> Gee, another wire just came unhooked. That explains why that won't work. Well, no duh, Mr. Wizard. Okay, time to finish this project off. And just to show you, it does. this does run. I've tested it again. I had to basically remove the front truck by squeezing these two little down pegs on the bottom you see here. And that allowed me to drop the truck and put the new wire and put the wire back in place. The final step today is just going to be to connect these two rear wires. I've already gone through to see which way they go in. These wires will allow the rear truck here to... conduct power as well, giving me a better connection. I just disconnected that wire in the process. <laughs> fun, fun, fun. Next I'm going to just go over this and connect that wire up. And I'm going to go take my other wire here and just connect her up and then I'll go reconnect those wires. And yes, before anyone asks, I made sure those screws were tightened down thoroughly to make sure they wouldn't, the wires wouldn't move as they are known to cross. Also, due to the nature of the way my solder joints happen, they just can't move because the solder would not allow the contact plate to move beyond a certain point. There we go. Oh. Then I just got to reconnect these two wires. Connectage, reconnectage here. Oh, it looks like this is actually still connected. Oh, okay. 
So if that's the case, this should all just work fine. <laughs> huh. Let me just double check to make sure that all held together. Uh, let's unbend this last connection right here, which got bent somehow. I don't know if it bent into the plastic or if this is actually physically connected. No, it's in. It looks like that's hooked in. It is amazing how it stayed connected, but it did. Okay, so I don't really care how it managed to stay connected. I just care that it did, and I'm just going to now just tighten this little wire up here. Now, let's go and just do one last test of her and make sure this is all hooked in the way it should be. Oh, I still have the power on. And there it is. It works. Woohoo! And now let's do the ultimate test now. See if that rear connection works. Oh no. Oh, there it goes. Now it's starting to kick in. Okay, it's working. Okay, good. It works. Woohoo! Okay. Uh, so, with that, the project is completed. I'm turning off my iron. Or something else catches fire tonight. Well, like last night where I had that other steamy, smoky situation from the steam engine. And with that, all of this is now finished. I can now put this thing away. Oh, few la one last detail I need to do here. I do have the shell here, but unfortunately the plastic topper, which is it's with a windshield thingy, came out right here. So I have to glue this back into place. Luckily, I do have the appropriate stuff. I'm going to give this stuff a try. I've been having a lot of luck with this uh, thing of all. This is a uh, Gorilla Glue, but it's their gr it's their clear glue uh, formula. I've been having good luck with using this for doing models. So we'll give it a try on this model here as sort of a test basis. See how it does. One thing I also notice I'm missing one of the horns on the top, but that's just going to have to do because I don't have one right now to put in there. Let me go now and just apply some glue into this little area right here. Oop, a little bit too much. I'm just going to slip now my little windshield thingy down into place. There we go. With that, I've got all that assembled and now going to tighten up my gor Gorilla Glue. Oh, there's always one last thing I have to put on top is that motor lock piece thingy that holds the motor in place. Let me dig that out here. I've got it. I hope. Yes, I do. In fact, I have two of them. Oh no, that screw is too big, I think that's a problem. I had another little screw here which I was working with before, but I don't know where I put it. There we go. Hmm, please tell me she goes in like that. Or she will go in like that, rather. There we go, that's, that'll work now. Put that stupid screw in there and let's tie this damn thing up. Yeah, that's biting. Okay, that'll work. That's working now. One last test for good luck. Not necessarily the smoothest runner around, but these things were never known for being smooth operators. And yes, essentially that was the end of the project, got the locomotive running, although it was a bit of a pain to get everything together the way it was supposed to be. I would eventually reattach the shell, and well, this is what it looks like afterward. Again, I did have to do a little bit more tweaking to the actual rear wheel pickups, but once that was done, she was in perfect operating condition. Anyway, folks, that's going to do it for this first restoration on the Bachman project. Uh, there will be a few more of these coming, as unfortunately I have a lot more work to do before I'm ready to release that video. So please stay tuned and kind of consider this again as a preview of what I'm up to and to show that I am working on this. I'm not sitting still. Keep the metal side down and like and subscribe, and have a great evening.